Just arrived in Old Swinford and uh, the constituency home of the Tory candidate, Margot James. This is an example of the big society in action. The journalist makes the tea. The main thrust of the idea is um, to galvanise the potential for community work, voluntary work, people doing um, things for the wider community in their neighbourhoods beyond their own families. What the Big Society idea is all about is harnessing that activity and giving it a little bit more oomph by engaging with the voluntary sector and by providing it with more resource. We can do a better job than um, is, is really done by, uh, by government at the moment. Government um, is not, it does not have all the answers to, to local people's problems. Now, page 38 of the Conservative Manifesto is where you get a flavour of what all this might actually mean. It talks about enabling parents to start new schools, empowering communities to take over local amenities such as parks and libraries that are under threat. And uh, you get a sense maybe of uh, increased involvement, participation, empowerment, and what the Tories call little platoons coming blinking out of their houses. I'm in Stourbridge Library now and it's a good place to ask two questions. What might all that mean, not just for the people who work it, but people who use this public service? Fancy running a library yourself? No. Why not? I have no organisational skills. <laughs> <laughs> the books would be everywhere. I think an investment in good staff is as important as books. If you're going to have um, people that don't know their staff, you're in dead trouble. You're stuck. You want someone who knows something about a library, how it's run, how books are classified, not just the Dewey system, the UDA. You sound like you really know your stuff. A oh, little bit. How would you feel about getting involved in running a library yourself, if you had to? Well, at 75, I'm not going to start doing things like that, because I've up to my neck in volunteer things. We won't be coming in with a blueprint to say every community has got to have volunteers running its library. That's not what it's going to be about. Uh, we are going to be a much lighter hand on the tiller. If you're happy with your local library, I'm sure there won't be any pressure to change it. I just wanted to see if I lived in an area that had a Conservative council and you were in, you're incentivising councils to freeze council tax. That puts a squeeze on things. Very often library services are the first thing to go. My library goes under threat and the next thing I know there's volunteers running it instead of librarians. Yeah, well I, I don't think that fear is, is justified. The Women's Royal Voluntary Service is one of Britain's greatest small platoons, but it's just had funding for its Meals on Wheels service cut for the local Tory-run council. Oh, hi, hello, Mrs. Bird. Our local authority withdrew from Meals on Wheels and they withdrew all their funding. So WRVS is trying to perpetuate that service um, under its own hat. You've taken the place, you've taken the place of local Yes, Government we, we here. were actually working with Dudley. Over the past 18 months, we've lost £32,000 worth of funding. Funding isn't the only problem. How easy is it to find volunteers? It's difficult. You've just got to be a certain person that likes doing that sort of thing. And you're counting the value by the services you give and not by the money you receive. Well, see, the thing is, relative to when the WRVS was set up before the Second World War, we're quite a different society now. The idea of mucking in and being neighbourly... Totally different. Uh, because there, were, there was a real good community spirit then, I think, and neighbours looked out for each other. Uh, but it's not just people. I mean, the whole working environment's changed. Well, I have so people that. don't have as much spare time now as they used to have. And then they become obviously wound up in their own family and going to work and coping with life and there aren't always the hours left. To me it keeps my, as Poirot says, my old grey cells ticking over. Yeah. I get the company, I get the pleasure and I find it very rewarding. But if I said to you, do you fancy getting involved in running your local park as well and doing no. a bit at the library? No. Why not? No, because I've got this and that's enough for me, thank oh. you. <laughs> Someone else can volunteer for that. You haven't heard this idea of the big society being talked about? No. No. Really? No. I don't remember it on the television the other night. Well, it's a shame, isn't it, that they've lost their £32,000? Well, there are a number of other groups now providing Meals on Wheels services and, and providing an excellent choice. And um, it's early days, but so far uh, there have been no complaints um, from users 
and obviously it's the WRVS Great British yes, Institution. Yes, yes. Well, and I think they, blankets they are. Food they the still are. They Duncan still are providing so. some of the service, I believe. I don't think that all of their service has been ended, but it has been more diversified, so that um, people are getting uh, a better choice so of meal. So they want to drive competition. And so um, I think to uh, both improve the quality and save money. Yeah. Right. In 2005, Labour held this seat by the narrowest of margins. At the end of the school day, their MP is trying to convince parents to stick with her. The kind of idea of, of community involvement and cooperation is basically a Labour idea. It certainly you know, comes from that, that kind of tradition, but, but it, it's, it's how it works in practice. And, and I, I just think it's a way of, of, of the Tories passing on the cost, really, and, and the hassle of dealing with, with public services and not really prepared to sort of back it up with some state involvement or at least state backing. The right of parents to set up their own schools under a new Conservative government. Even on a governing body, if you have particularly um, articulate or opinionated parents, um, I think sometimes that can skew the policy and the way that uh, that that the school goes. It's interesting. So I think you need I think you need a balance. I think there's very definitely a role for parents, but um, not necessarily uh, in charge. Are you um, on a slightly sticky wicket as a Labour politician, arguing against parents starting up their own schools? Because the academy's programme has given control to schools mm. to a lot of people who hitherto wouldn't have been allowed mm. that role. Evangelical charities. Indeed. Uh, business groups? I'm, well, I'm not on a sticky wicket. I'm a, I'm a Labour politician, but as a former teacher and a parent myself, um, you know, I don't subscribe uh, necessarily 100% to the policy. Um, I'm also a previous NUT rep, so ah, I have okay. to tell you. You're not a great Academy <laughs> fan then? I'm not a great Academy fan, right. but, but there has been... Because I was going to say, if, if evangelical car dealers, as happens in the North East, why not parents' groups? Yeah, I, again, for me, I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced. It, that might upset Ed, but hey, you know, we're, we're a broad church. Don't upset Ed Balls. <laughs> The big society. You heard of that? Nah. Right. Do you fancy setting up your own school? I've got a school of my own. I've got eight kids. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think it's best left to the people who know more about it. I don't know. Would the offer of being able to set up your own school make you more likely to vote Conservative? No, I don't think I would vote Conservative. Why not? I think they're crap. Parents can set up their own school. Yeah. What do you think of that idea? Yes, yeah, a good idea. Really? <laughs> Why is it a good idea? Because some schools are crap, I think. <laughs> Got enough time? I'd find time. Right, OK. If it was to be a good school for my kids' education, then you'd find time. How would it be different? <laughs> I could say that because I'm going to get done for being racist, and I'm not. Explain that. It would be a school for our kids. White kids? Yeah. I'm telling you. Your kids are educated alongside Muslim children. You find that difficult, do you? Sometimes, yeah. Right, okay. Do you talk to Muslim mums at the gate much, or is it? No. Really? Not really. There's the odd few. Basically, it's a very good school. I've always been happy. Um, that's why I sent my girls here. So. Everybody get on? Yeah. Everyone gets on. We, should, so. we spoke to a woman over there, and the first thing that she said was, if she had the chance to start her own school, she'd make it exclusively for white kids. Oh, well, there, there you go. See? A lot of uh, different issues will arise, so. <laughs> well, obviously, um, very, that, that's terrible. Um, and I, I have nothing to say on it really. I mean, you could find racism anywhere in the country. Um, I don't think that lady is typical of the residents of Starridge. I mean, there will be some national accountability guidelines on admissions criteria, for example. Um, we just want to free um, parents up in areas where there is a wide perception that there, are, that there aren't enough good schools. Um, say you've got a single parent, minimum wage job, maybe doing a couple of hours of bar work in the evening. What openings are there for that sort of person? Because it's hard, isn't it? It is hard, but I mean, I, by the way, I don't think that every single adult will become involved. If it says it there, it must be true. Forgive me for being at slight variance. I do think that there is scope for every adult. A week ago, the big society seemed to be David Cameron's big idea, but it was conspicuous by its absence from the first of the leaders' debates. And I have to say, having spent a day in this really close Labour Conservative marginal, running it past a lot of the people it's meant to appeal to, I'm still feeling pretty baffled. In the future, are all of us meant to be volunteering, or will that apply to just some of us? Will community empowerment be something applied to a lot of libraries, or maybe just a few? If nice parents can set up schools, 
What about the nasty ones? Where's the money going to come from? And have we all got enough time to get involved in things like the running of our local parks? In modern Britain, we really do have to talk about community involvement and neighbourliness. And there's definitely a conversation to be had about the drawbacks of the old centralised model of public services. But I have to say, the big society feels a lot more like a flimsy bit of branding than a convincing idea.